for music, passion for the instruments, passion for the musicians uh, that's driven every single decision this company has ever made. And that's, that's what we do. That's, that's why we do it. When we first started working on the fifth string capo, we didn't really expect to go into business, but it didn't take too long before we started thinking that way. We were sort of these, these two guys with a product in a shoebox and, uh, and, you know, the American dream. The reason there needs to be a fifth string capo is because the fifth string starts here. There had never been one quite like this before. I had drawings of what it should be like, but I couldn't get anybody interested in making one, anybody who was actually in the, in the music parts business. So um, I just carried the, the drawings around and the idea, and now and then if the subject came up, I would rant and rave about it. Uh, and I was doing that one night at a banjo lesson. Uh, my student was Dave Kuntz, uh, and he was an auto mechanic. The following week at his next lesson, he brought a prototype in. And it was according, you know, to just about what I had drawn. I didn't even think twice. I just put it on. I, it, it involves screwing screws into your neck. So, uh, you know, it is kind of a commitment. And so I used it on a gig and I had some ideas for improvements. So we started uh, week by week uh, making these improvements on it. I would go out to his shop at closing time and we'd roll down the door and then we would get to work on this. We did this for weeks, week after week, each time refining it. I figured we were done. I had mine, that's what I wanted. But we both started thinking, well, you know, other people are gonna want these too. So instead of deciding how to make one, we, we were trying to think of how to make a hundred. We made a hundred of them, and I went to five bluegrass festivals in five weeks. Before I left town, uh, I, I made the first sale of a product from Shub Capos, and our first customer, Jerry Garcia. He was playing bluegrass at the time. He was playing an old and in the way. I called him and said, hey, I've got this new thing. He said, great. He went for it right away. And it was the first installation that I actually made myself. Here I was with my little pin vise, with, you know, screwing holes in there, just like I knew what I was doing. The guitar capo changed everything. We wanted to make a guitar capo because people would choose the least of various evils and nobody really liked their capos. They were all modeled after some other kind of clamping device. They all put the guitar out of tune. But we wanted to make a better capo. The one thing that we could think of that didn't put the guitar out of tune was your hand. Probably the, the single biggest step was when Dave decided to, to try to put a, uh, a hinge on the bottom piece of a C-shaped capo. His intention was to make a quick release so that you could just open it and it would be faster to take off the net. He put the hinge on it. It had the quick release, that part we expected. But what we didn't expect was how it would close. The closing action was so much like your hand, it just astonished me. I put it on my guitar. I hadn't even taken it off. And I knew that this is what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. It's very well made and people who like well made things like it. These three pieces, you can put them together, you can make something that looks almost like it and it won't work. It, it has to be exactly so for the over center lock to lock. You, you close it and it, the tension increases until it, it reaches center and then it relaxes a little bit. Just like your hand on, on the net, the rubber part is like your skin, the metal part is like your bone, and it closes on there and it lets the string relax. I'm doing what I love, and all of these people 
uh, who are who are using my product, they feel like my family, and we call them that. We call them the the Shub family of artists. Uh, some of them have grown to be really good friends. You should be singing in the key that your voice sounds best in. You quickly transpose and find that sweet spot um, where your voice, you know, just makes people weep. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I uh, like shed capos is because they're the best. Your guitar does not go out of tune when you put it on, which is one of the best parts about they it. click and stick and they make you sound great. I love these capos. You can get exactly the right amount of pressure so you're not pulling things sharp. This tune wouldn't exist if I didn't, <laughs> didn't have that banjo capo because uh, it inspired me, you know, to try something different. Rick didn't go out and say, hey, here's a free capo. Can we take your no, picture? No, I, I never have done that. Right. I wait to find people who already use the capo. A musician was only going to use the stuff they want to use. And so if they're using my capo, they found it on their own. I was watching television. Chet Atkins comes on. He plays an instrumental, reaches into his pocket, pulls out a capo, a shub capo. That was that was my one of my great moments, I think, in the in the history of the capo business. If if you're a player, the people that you're watching and trying to, to emulate their gear, they're using the shubs. Mm -hmm. And when I see my capo on stage on, on one of these big shows, I feel like I'm playing that show because I am. That's me up there, that little clamp on that guy's neck. And I've been on the cover of Rolling Stone many times. The first time was on Keith Richards' guitar, and it was the Rolling Stones. I played at the Super Bowl, I played at the Olympics. <laughs> Musicians, for the most part, are, are just really warm people. They've, they've already sort of opened themselves up. They've laid their hearts out in some way or another. That makes them accessible. You know something about them that, that you already like. So many of the people that I've met through the business have turned out to be really wonderful people and really, really good friends. People who bought them 40 years ago still have them. A friend of mine, you know, who I went to high school with, uh, got a capo from me before it was in production. It was a prototype. It's got a number two stamped on it. He's got old number two, he called, still in action. <laughs>